What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles, coming back at you two weeks in a row. We're breaking records. I know some crazy stuff is happening with this, but today we're gonna talk about a question that I get asked all the time and I see posted all over the place, and that is how often can you handle your snake? Whether this is a baby, an adult, something you just got in, something you had for a long time, whether it's in shed or in f it just ate, we're gonna talk about all that today. For the purpose of the video, I'm gonna be holding this little baby leopard boa. I'm gonna zoom in on you guys so you can see this. This is a leopard boa, it's het type two anery. This boa, as well as a whole bunch of others, are for sale and available on my website, www.jasonsexoticreptiles.com. With all that said, no further ado, let's dive into the video itself. Let's tackle question number one, which is how often can you handle your baby snake or snake in general? These are not hard set rules. These are gonna be general rules of thumb that you can apply and you can adjust up or down from, from here. So first question I would say, one is how old is the snake? And then two is what's the environment like that you're handling the snake in? In a room like what I'm sitting in here, you know, it's 75 to 80 degrees. I try to keep it at 78, but depending on the room where it is, you know, higher to the ceiling, lower to the floor. But let's just say for all purposes, this is 75 to 80 degrees. For the most part, I can have this snake out here for a long time from the temperature standpoint. But from the stress standpoint, this is a younger snake. It's well established at this point. It's had multiple meals in it. It's eating frozen thawed prey. And, and really, there's nothing I can really do to mess this snake up. Now, if I'm holding this snake an hour every day, we're probably in good shape. Anything more than that, you might start stressing it out a little bit too much and maybe you wanna cut back. But some common indicators that you wanna use whether you're handling it too much is if it's refusing food, if it's having trouble shed, if it's anything like that, you're stressing the snake out too much. Now you have to consider that when you are taking this snake out of its enclosure that is all climate controlled and bringing it to your home, which is most likely for most people, it's gonna be in the range of 68 to 72 degrees. Now this is a small snake, I have it in my hand, I can easily keep it covered, I can easily keep the heat in there, but it's not the ideal environment. So that's gonna really be the biggest limiting factor. If you live in some place like Florida or some place that's warm all year long, whether it's in this country or in another country, uh, that's something that we can kind of, maybe the environment and the climate isn't as big of a deal, you know, unless you're getting into air conditioning. Air conditioning is really bad for snakes, especially if it's kind of right over their cage. But in general, you want to be able to make sure that when the snake is out, the conditions in the environment that it's in are not going to harm the snake itself. I see a lot of people who take their snake out a lot, but they're constantly taking it out in a room that's cold, uh, or a room that's, a room that's colder. And when they do that, the snake ends up coming down with respiratory infections or other things like that. So just keep that in mind when you're handling your snake outside of the enclosure. When they're in shed, there's nothing that says you cannot handle a snake when it's in shed. When a snake is in shed, it doesn't see as well, but if it's already used to being handled in shed, or if it's already used to being handled, it may be totally fine to come out. As a general rule, I try to tell people to avoid handling a snake when it's in shed, especially if it's a younger animal that's not used to being uh, handled in shed, they can tend to be a little bit more defensive, a little more nervous. But if you have an older snake that's that's been in shed and, and you've had it for a while, it's used to coming out, it's used to being out of the enclosure and being handled, there's nothing that says you can't handle it. Now, generally, if they're going into shed and you can avoid it, it's always best. Let the snake do its thing, get the heat, uh, and, and just really soak up, get the humidity so its skin is ready to go. Now, if it's in shed and you handle it and it has a bad shed, then clear Clearly something you're doing, whether it's your room is too warm or whatever, your room is too dry, that's telling you that, okay, leave the snake alone, let it do its thing, let it shed out, and then you're in good shape from there. After you feed it, this is going to be very dependent on the size prey that you feed. Uh, if you feed something that is leaving a lump, I generally tell people to don't do any handling. And when I say handling, that's different from moving, that's different from taking out and moving it from one spot to the next if you need to clean something. Handling like what I'm doing right now, physically holding the snake outside of the enclosure for a period of time, just for the purposes of me wanting to interact with the animal, give the animal a chance to get out of its enclosure. I would say wait until there is no further lump and then a little bit longer. It's really important when the snake is eating and when it's digesting that it has the time to sit on the heat. 
So a lot of people will emphasize, you know, feeding schedules and the digestion time within it. The snake is digesting for the whole time, even until you, you, you know, you can't see a lump anymore. So you have to be aware that when you're pulling the snake out of the enclosure, you're going to take it out, you're taking it off of its heat, it stops the digestion process, it slows down its digestion phase itself, and then you maybe need to account for that in your feeding schedule. Now, now if we're in Florida and you're, it's 90 degrees outside, it's still slowing down the digestion process because it's getting the snake active and moving, but at the same time the heat is still there. So this is something you just need to adjust. I don't want to give any you can handle for one hour per week or one hour every other day because every snake is going to be different. This snake may be fine like this. I could have another snake, I do the exact same thing and it starts going off feed, it starts doing really, really bad from there. So I would say the best bet when you first get your snake, let's say you just order the snake from me, give it a week, give it a week to let it find its temperatures. Not so much because it's stressed, a little bit because it's stressed, but these snakes are, they're, they're resilient, they can handle stress. It's so they can explore and get comfortable in the new enclosure. It needs to be able to find where's the hot spot, where's the cold spot, where am I safe, where am I not, what's exposed, where's my water, all these things that the snake is finding out in the first week. And the more you interact with it, the, the more you're disturbing that, that kind of integration phase into the new enclosure. So I think that's really important to, to allow the snake that week period or longer if you can to settle into the enclosure. It's, it's, it will be, it'll be beneficial in the long run if you do that. If you do need to take it out, all right, it went to the bathroom in the cage, you know, take, pick it up out of the cage, put it somewhere where it can sit down, take, take the bedding out or take the substrate, change the cage, put the snake back in. To me, that is not handling, it is interaction. Uh, and don't get kind of cute with it and check on the snake every five minutes and say, I'm not handling, I'm just interacting every five seconds. It's, um, it's you know, kind of use, use the holistic approach to this, is that this snake is gonna be around for a very long time. You're gonna have plenty of time to handle it. Don't rush that introductory phase. And I think this applies even for older, more well-established snakes. All of these rules apply as if it were a newborn snake. Newborn snakes will apply, or they will show signs of stress and show signs of digestion issues before an older snake will, because they just, they have a younger kind of system, no different than a baby. You know, a, a baby human is gonna show signs of stress quicker than a, an adult. So they're gonna start crying instantly, where an adult, they may wanna cry, but they know how to cope with it. Same thing applies to snakes. So with all of that said, I hope this video helped a couple of you guys navigate when you should or shouldn't handle a snake, what to do, how long you can handle it, and generally the rules that apply to feeding and in, in shed snakes. This snake is actually going into shed soon. We'll take one more look at her because she's, she's or he, I, I'd have to check the sex. We'll, we'll do that. And I'll do this in a whole other video, but it's the tail palpation method. And this is, a, this is a girl. So again, this girl is available on the website. She's really pretty. I think she's het type 2 uh, anatheristic. So really, uh, you know, good, gen good genetics are 50% het type 2. Really cool looking snake. Leopards are some of my favorite morphs. But uh, again, hopefully this video helped you guys. Hopefully it helps you navigate your way through snake keeping and uh, eventually breeding if that's what you're into. Until next week or until next video, I appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit the bell notification, subscribe. You know, again, like this channel. The more you guys support this channel, the more videos I can make. I appreciate everybody watching. Till next week or until next time, let's keep it moving.